from Orlando, Florida, welcome to Artists of Science. Here we have the pleasure to have with us Professor Eje Goyen. Uh, welcome and it's a pleasure and honor to have you with us. Uh, the first question is about your profession. Your achievement in life, 45 years in uh, university and two years as a research engineer. Um, uh, what, tell us about something about uh, the, your achievement, in what field you work, and what you enjoyed about your uh, okay. your work. Uh, we have done many, many different things, and have actually shifted fields several times in my career. Mm -hmm. I started working in a field that was mainly concerned about uh, how to bind ions like sodium, which is very important in the human body, and uh, calcium and potassium and so on. And uh, from a very fundamental perspective, so we were designing uh, compounds that were selective at binding only this ion and not that other ion. Something that nature does very well. As you know, you have sodium and potassium ion channels, without which you would just die. Everyone would, would die instantaneously. So what we were doing were synthetic versions of these naturally occurring compounds. So in, in that field, we, we made a lot of contributions. Uh, and later, or more recently, we have made a lot of contributions in the field called carbon materials. Uh, I don't know how much you have heard about uh, carbon materials, in particular the carbon cages, uh, so-called buckyballs, I don't know if you have heard of buckyballs. This is an interesting field. Mm -hmm. the, the, the most important buckyball of all is called C60, and it's a compound that is an identical replica of a soccer ball. Mm -hmm. So this is a football ball. I know more about a football than you probably know. Uh, how many pentagons are in a <laughs> football? How many hexagons? And how are these uh, pentagons and hexagons distributed on a compound that is exclusively composed of 60 carbons? No hydrogen, no oxygen, no nitrogen, no nothing. It's just 60 carbons in a cage. And uh, we've done quite a bit of, of work looking at the properties of these compounds. And they have, actually, they do have applications in uh, photovoltaics, in solar cells. So these compounds are such good accepting electrons that they are used in solar cells. When the light comes in, they, uh, the light separates uh, the positive charge from the electrons. And these electrons are accepted very, very efficiently by these buckyballs. And now you can separate the plus and the minus, and you have a photogram, and that's a solar cell. Well, it's much more applied than I thought. Yeah, yeah. Well, we don't do that work. We, oh, okay. we do the electronic and the fundamental. So, so, oh. so we don't do typically. We do solar cells, but that's not the main cross. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So, which one was more exciting for you, physics or chemistry? Because you've dealt with both of them. Actually, both are equally interesting to me. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Chemistry has one property that essentially no other science has, which is, and I think it was Berthelot who did, did describe this, chemistry makes its own object, which means a biologist normally is submitted to what nature has, right? And you go and you study what nature has done. Uh, a physicist also goes to measure the laws of gravity and the, which exist, and they figure them out. A chemist makes things that don't exist. Nature has not made them, and no other human being or them has made them. So chemistry is unique as a science in that it can actually prepare compounds that don't exist and may have amazing or not amazing properties. But every time you make a compound, as I was telling you yesterday or the day before yesterday, every time you make a new compound that we do in our group, it's the world's supply of that compound. So Excellent. You have a little vial that contains the only supply of this compound in the entire world. So well, developing new things. But and, and it's very creative endeavor because you can make and you can create things that are very clever structurally and the properties as well. So you can actually put things together that, that give you properties that sometimes were not even anticipated. So it's not just imitating the nature, but it's creating new things. That's exactly right. Yeah, but to, to, to come in a different subject, what attracted you? What's the story? Why you came? You became attracted to physics and chemistry from the, the early ages. 
And I think that comes with you. I think it's part of, uh, maybe it's in the DNA, I don't know, of it, but it, it's a predisposition. Ever since I was very, very little, I, I had this uh, scientific curiosity. I, I was awed by how things work and how they work and so on. So it was mainly engineering at the beginning. I was fascinated with electromagnetics and, uh, and at what, batteries. At what age? At what years? Very early, eight. Eight, eight years. Was older, yeah. With, uh, uh, things, uh, making things, more uh, engineering, not, not really chemistry. Um, so, so I think it's it's a predisposition. People who have this curiosity about why is this this way? Why, why does a uh, pressure cooker uh, work? Right? Why are the ghosts? And then at the end, you cook things much faster. That, that fascinates me. So when I was 11 or 12, I was already reading and trying to understand what made the pressure cooker work. The way. Nobody told you. Why science and engineering? Why not law? Why not sociology? They keep, these people make a lot of more money than science and engineers. They used to. I'm not sure that they do anymore. But many scientists make money. I don't do that, by the way. I'm sure that some lawyers make more money than I do, but I'm sure that I make more money than many lawyers than this one. So I think that it's a misconception that all physicians and all lawyers make more money than anybody else. It's not really true. Uh, that's so, so, hope. And, and I don't know who your audience is, but I would like to send that message because many people select careers just for money. Of course, mm -hmm. money is one thing, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, satisfaction, intellectual satisfaction, for me is very important. Uh, mm -hmm. So, so, so why these things? I, I did have additional interests. I, I love uh, the humanities, for example. And uh, I actually ended up with a minor in philosophy. Mm -hmm. and I, I used to write, and I, I thought at one point of becoming a writer. Sir, uh, so yes. uh, me too. I used to. And, and then I ended up in exact science. Yeah. Science <laughs> has a fascination yeah. as well. And, and to some degree, this creativity aspect of it is quite unique. I mean, you, mm -hmm. you can really become as creative as you want in, mm -hmm. in the scientific field, in chemistry. You can make compounds that, that are probably useless, but beautiful and, <laughs> and, and some people publish things that are incredibly intricate, but are prepared in very, very simple ways. Uh, mm. uh, the name uh, Makoto Fujita comes from my piece in Japan, and he puts pieces, uh, and it, it all self-assembles into this amazingly complicated, and it's not very difficult to do. Shake it, and all of a sudden here you have this amazing, so if we go back, let's say 50, 60 years, you would have chosen the same profession? Oh, yeah. No doubt about it. What uh, about your family, wife, children, or in what field they are? Uh, Do they have that passion for exact science like you? I don't know if they're as passionate as I am for what they do. I, I know my, my older daughter, since she was, again, eight or nine, it was clear that she had an incredible ability she was mm -hmm. absolutely gifted in mathematics. And she enjoys it very much. She teaches uh, mathematics. And, uh, and, uh, I think she's as much as I am. Uh, and my little one is uh, is all about languages. And she really uh, loves languages. Lives in Taiwan at this point. Oh. And, and your wife is a she's chemist a also? Yeah. Uh, so you are two chemists in one family. It's a good thing or a bad thing? Um, that's a good question. Uh, it's interesting because we do talk uh, some chemistry at home, yeah. and, uh, and every time, because my, my wife also is of Hispanic uh, background, she's yeah. from Venezuela, and uh, uh, we speak Spanish at home when it's not scientific, but when we talk science, it's, it's English. English. That's interesting. And, and she, she is also very passionate about science, even though she doesn't really do research in science anymore. More of an administrative so what message you can say to young people that uh, usually there is this word spread around that exact signs are boring and not too much giving not too much money why I spend my life in sciences when I can make more money easily in other professions clearly the message from me is number one find what your passion is mm -hmm. whatever that may be uh, hopefully you will have some inclination for science. Science can be fantastically interesting and beautiful. And not boring. Absolutely. And not boring. And not boring 
at all. And if it is boring, it's because the person who's teaching you to do doesn't understand it. That's typically the reason why I think mathematics, the person makes it so complicated that instead of doing like the reason out of what's going on, you find it onerous and impossible to understand. That means you have a bad teacher. I cannot conceive of someone taking a chemistry class and not getting turned on by the chemistry class because it's it's really good. It's like playing with a, a tinker toy, right? It's like a Lego set. And you have pieces and you can actually play with the pieces. So, if, if it is not taught appropriately, which unfortunately we have it very frequently, there are many teachers out there who really don't even understand the subject. And if you don't understand it, you're not, not sure. passing through the passion and the, and the beauty of communicating. Right? Mm. And of course, the passion is never there. They do it as a chore. Mm -hmm. Memorize the periodic table and something like that. And that's not really chemistry. And uh, the chemistry is about building things, uh, synthetic chemistry. And another concept among young people is that in science you have to work hard, long hours, no entertainment. So basically, you have a life that is not enjoyable. And What's... And there's some truth to what you're saying. Mm -hmm. I mean, because you're passionate put a lot of time into it. Mm -hmm. uh, a typical, really good, dedicated graduate student who has a passion for chemistry will end up putting many, many, many hours in the lab because you're, you really want to know what the answer is. It's a passion. It takes a passion for it. So you dedicate a lot of time. But many, many more, especially younger folks, uh, they, they do much more of a balance between uh, uh, professional and personal. Uh, is it easy to make the balance? It's, it, I think it, Yes, if you work at it, I think it's easy. Uh, but if you're passionate, you're going to end up there. And if you already took chemists home, probably it's easier. It's easy. Okay. For us, it's very easy. It's very, very easy, easy, actually. Yeah. For sure. What about? One thing that I want to say yeah. about chemistry, it's it's called a central science. Uh, you probably know. It applies it's everywhere. Easy. Yeah, it's everywhere. I mean, everything you touch, everywhere. everything you wear, everything. Use, Even in misconceptions, chemical. when I say we need water without chemical, without water is a chemical. That's right. <laughs> we, we had one of these American Chemical Society meetings one time, and it was a, a whole table of chemists. Yeah. Uh, I think it was like 15 of us. And the waiter was kind of uh, uh, kind of a smart aleck. And, uh, mm -hmm. so, oh, we can give you this steak that is uh, chemical free. And <laughs> the, whole, uh, the whole table just blacked off because you cannot have anything chemical free. It's a vacuum, right? Like the, it's, it's a chemical. chemical. It's, it's nitrogen, oxygen. It's a chemical. It's a chemical. It's a chemical. It's a chemical. Everything. So, so everything that we have, everything that we use, uh, from a car to a little, depends on chemistry and you know, everything. And anything that is related to biology has a very, very important fundamental connection to how are the molecules operating, how are the DNA uh, and so on. So understanding chemistry allows you to get into the biological world and uh, actually make changes in the world, significant changes in the world. Or in the materials, you can make a better shoes, a better, uh, very resistant uh, steel. The other day I sent to my whole group, I saw it on Twitter, the lightest ever material yeah, it was sitting okay, on the yeah, floor yeah, yeah. 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 and arrowed the feet. Oh okay. Yeah. And, it, and it's a very light and very strong. Unique. So materials is demonstration. Biology, I hate to say it, I don't want to talk too choppy this week, but biology no, no. at the end is chemistry. Yeah. It's not the Okay, so the living organism and water is a great problem. But it's all, we're super chemical. I think everyone should pay attention, at least once in their life. Uh, we want this for young folks. Pay a little bit of attention to chemistry and find yourself a mentor who knows things, who really understands it and is able to communicate why this is so important. I have a feeling. Many more people feel that the chemistry is not difficult, not crazy. It's, it's actually very accessible. What about your hobbies? What about your hobbies? Uh,
besides science and business, I don't know. I'm a big, uh, almost addicted uh, hiker. I hike uh, all the time. And uh, where I live, we have conflicts everywhere, so I like to have conflicts. So I can come a lot. Frequently? Uh, frequently? Uh, very frequently. Yeah. Uh, 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 three times a week. Three so times a week. Uh, on weekends, I will hike about five or six miles. In my previous uh, positions, when I was in Miami, I was in, in places where I could go to the ocean. I love the ocean. I was born in an island in Cuba. I grew up in another island in Puerto Rico. So I like the ocean. And I am a big uh, fishing. I like the ocean. Which one is the strongest? And the hottest? I would say, say or others, or hiking. Uh, I, I think they're different levels, right? Yeah. I, I mean, Hiking is great for clearing up your mind and making uh, your body go. Uh, science requires much more of a It's complementary for human beings. Yes. You need, uh, what is it? Uh, I don't know what it's called. Uh, what is it? Yeah, the healthy mind. The healthy yeah, mind. Healthy, a healthy mind and a healthy body. So, uh, but, yeah, the idea is to, so as scientists, so as chemists, 40 years, 40 years experience, so you have a good life. I feel fulfilled, yeah. I feel very happy with that. Would I do anything else different? The answer is anything you regret from your life? I you would have done it better? Uh, I think we all have probably small regrets, but no big, I don't yeah. have a big regret. Yeah, and, and you, you sometimes you do something that hey, if I could have a little bit different this way, it would have been better. But, but now, big regrets. No. So, for the young generation, you want to make something? In July, you do the chemist and physics, physicist, part of it. You do the physics. So, uh, anything you can say to the young generation? Should they follow you? Well, obviously, I like what I've done, and I'm happy with what I've done. So, I would definitely recommend to everyone to consider a career in science, uh, and and it doesn't have to be just fundamental science like I do. You can be a one, you can be a master, which is very practical and full uh, oriented. Uh, we wouldn't be probably walking around here if it wasn't for the pharmaceutical industry, people who make new drugs, new antibiotics. And so I think it's incredibly rewarding. It should be a consideration of every young person to get into some technical field. It doesn't mean everyone needs to be a technical uh, but uh, I think everyone should give it a uh, and give it a try. Yeah. Yeah. As I said earlier, being open minded and having I mean, I mean, someone to explain things in my passion and clean. It's not a piece. And, and what you said, I like your word, uh, it's a myth that science is so different. It is not. It's just like everyone. If you like something, it's easy. Mm -hmm. If you like adaptations, love. Easy. It's easy. And fulfillment and, 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 and fulfilled life and enjoyable life. Yes. Yeah, that, we conclude. Thank you very much. Thank you. We appreciate your input and we appreciate your message to the young generation about science. This is our goal. It is. Excellent. Thank you again. And consider chemistry because it's the only science that allows you to create matter. Excellent. The message is clear. Thank Very you good. again. No problem. Thank you. My pleasure. <laughs>